Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Senate Education. It is uh, Wednesday, April 14th at a little after 1.35 in the afternoon. We have a uh, pretty full schedule today. We are going to start with uh, having a walkthrough and some testimony on S-134, an act relating to the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, appreciate the chancellor and her team being with us and uh, we'll kick it off in a moment with the bill, one of the bill sponsors. I then hope uh, that uh, senators are uh, comfortable. If not, we can always do it, uh, postpone it a day, but uh, I would like to advance the Secretary of Education's uh, appointment, confirmation. Uh, that would just be a, a vote uh, of the committee. And then Senators and others will recall last week, we looked a little bit, we had Coach uh, Representative Christian and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Demarais coming back with language uh, around uh, diversifying the state board of education. And then uh, at the end of the day, we will uh, return to age 426 uh, public school facilities in the state. So with that, uh, Senator Hooker, thanks for, uh, uh, taking us through, if you wouldn't mind, a, a little bit of background on your bill. And I know uh, your colleagues in Rutland County uh, co-sponsor this with you, Senators Colin Moore and Terenzini. And after we get sort of the genesis uh, and uh, the big idea, we'll pass it on to uh, Mr. Demaray. Hey, thank, thank you, you. Senator Campion. Um, and thank you, all of you from Vermont State College System for being here to listen to our request. Uh, Senator Terenzini, who is the lead sponsor of the bill, is not available. He has some uh, dental surgery today, so we're hoping that he's well and can come back soon and uh, rejoin the discussion. But um, first of all, let me say that we understand the stresses that the Vermont State College system has, has been under and the effort that the select committee, the chancellor's office and the board of trustees to address these serious issues facing the future of um, our state colleges have been working on. The purpose of this bill, S-134, is to allow the legislature and Vermonters to more fully understand the problems especially as they relate to individual institutions. Where, um, where are the pluses and minuses? Where are the profits and losses of the system as a whole and of each campus? The proposed merger of the four campuses may be the way to solve many of the difficulties our longstanding schools of higher education are facing. And S134 would allow us to know where those difficulties are system-wide or school-specific. So the first part of the bill has to do with the finances and uh, a more um, public, uh, um, just a public um, offering of where the finances are for each of the schools, whether it be Castleton, NVU, or VTC, as opposed to the, the state of the system as a whole. The second part of the bill has to do with branding and the names of the institutions themselves. These schools have spent, have been around for a long time and people know them by their names, especially down here in Castleton, where Castleton was the first of the schools of higher education in the state. So we kind of have a, a history, we do have a history of that particular not a moniker being associated with this area of the state. And we see it certainly as a, a point of pride and also as an economic tool for our area. So our request to have the names of the institutions be at the front of the names of this system uh, is what's driving this. I'm, I'm speaking personally from Castleton's point of view. Certainly that's what prompted this bill. But we also recognize that VTC, I mean, where, how many other places in Vermont besides UVM perhaps can we say the initials and know what we're talking about? VTC has been around 
uh, long, so long that it's a household name. Uh, NVU has made its own brand now after the merger that took place a few years ago. And it seems that to ask schools that have gone through this change already or have not gone through the change yet, um, to have to do it would be economically a challenge, whether it's uh, an, an unnecessary expense to change the name, uh, and it would do harm to the time that has been spent branding those schools to draw people from the area, from the state, from the region, from the world, perhaps, uh, as it is evidenced in the number of foreign students that come to Castleton. So we're asking for a continuation of the names of the institutions at the front of the new name, whatever it would be for the merging um, system. Uh, the I think Mr. Demaray is going to take us through the bill um, section by section, so I won't um, go on. But that is the impetus behind what we're asking for. First, it's kind of transparency as to the finances and the um, needs of each of the institutions, and also as um, a, a witness to the importance of the names of the institutions as they are. Great. So I'll hand it over to Mr. Demaray. Great. Thanks, Senator Hooker. Appreciate that. Mr. Demaray, uh, we're ready when, when you are. Would you prefer I pull this up on screen or put that, put that separately? Uh, I think we all have it. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so for the record, uh, Jim D. and Murray, Les Consul, we're walking through S134. And the statement of purpose of the bill, on page one, does summarize uh, the three major points that Senator Herker went through. So first of all, uh, the purpose is to um, require uh, Vermont City Colleges to annually um, submit to you it's either financial statements for the prior year, uh, including separate financial statements for each of the um, university and colleges in its system uh, with information on their sustainability and enrollment. The second purpose is to um, require the university colleges to publicly disclose its annual budget allocation to each of its colleges and universities together with the rationale uh, for that, that allocation. And the third, third purpose is to condition state funding uh, of the Vermont State Colleges on um, the um, requiring that the name of the college or university that currently is used, um, if it is changed, it'll be used at the beginning of the new name. Um, going on to page two, Section one is amending uh, the statute on um, 2177, um, which deals with uh, financial reports. And this is a new subdivision two that says that annually um, before December 15, uh, the corporation, which is VSC, uh, shall submit to you its other financial statements for the prior fiscal year. Um, again, including separate financial statements for each university and college in the system. Uh, that will include a profit and loss statement and will include um, um, a report on the financial sustainability uh, of the corporation in each university and college over the next five years. Uh, and, um, oh, this is, sorry, my version is, I were not sorry. Um, and uh, the full time enrollment for the prior school year and a five year enrollment trend analysis uh, for each college and university. And then a uh, new sub uh, section G um, says the amounts of the corporation annually budgets 
to be allocated to each of its colleges and universities shall be publicly disclosed by VSC not less than 10 days prior to the payment of any allocation or part of any allocation to any of the colleges and universities together with the rationale in support of the allocations uh, made. Um, and then lastly, uh, section two is around uh, branding. And uh, first it has um, language about, brand, about, about the background. Uh, saying that the colleges have built a brand within the count their counties, the state, and beyond, and that uh, students, families, donors, and business communities recognize the brand, and that a change uh, that does not include the current name of the college or university at the beginning would damage this brand and may negatively impact enrollment donations and business support. But as I say, that the purpose of Section 3 um, is to ensure that the corporation does not change the name, uh, as we just mentioned. Um, and then uh, we go on to section three, which is amending statute again. Um, and so, uh, first of all, there's a change on line 12, which makes uh, funding uh, subject to sub section B. So come on to, um, and B, first of all, changes the, the names to the correct names of these uh, colleges and universities. Um, and then, yeah, and then um, in uh, lines three through six on page five, uh, it says that the corporation changes the name of any college or university in a system to a name that does not include the current name uh, at the beginning of the, of the new name, it should no, no longer be eligible for state funding. And the effective date is on passage. Thank you. Uh, any questions, immediate questions for uh, Mr. Demaret? All right, seeing none. Uh, Chancellor Zadotny, uh, great to see you as well as Ms. Scott and Ms. Lavasser. I know you're here with your, your team, which is great. Uh, the Laura is yours, and I think um, however you would like to handle it, uh, there are two issues that we're talking about. Address them uh, as, you, uh, as you'd prefer. Great, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, we do uh, welcome uh, the opportunity to come in and talk to you. It's always a pleasure to come in and share information about what we're doing at the Vermont State Colleges. So thank you for having us in. Um, and we do understand the concern uh, from each of our host communities and our school stakeholders regarding what the transformation of the Vermont State College system will mean for those institutions and for their communities. Uh, we also recognize that change, particularly on the scale of transformation that the Vermont State College system is undertaking is challenging and uncertainty creates anxiety. So we completely understand that. And we also recognize that the Castleton community in particular has been vocal about the school's identity and their brand. And so we want to assure you um, that we care about the same things that you and the Rutland community and all the other communities that, that host our institutions care about, um, including maintaining the Castleton campus as a vibrant and attractive campus for students, incorporating the high value elements of Castleton's and the other institutions existing brands, while also having a marketing strategy that communicates the mission and vision of the new combined entity. Uh, we also want to make sure that the new combined entity is fiscally sustainable so that Castleton and the other Vermont State College institutions can continue to serve as economic, social, and cultural anchors in their host communities and with, that we do everything with transparency and accountability. Having said that, we do have significant reservations about the bill as drafted uh, for several reasons. Uh, primarily, the bill would really take us in a different direction than the path that we are currently on. And so, uh, you know, briefly, I would just uh, sort of remind everyone that the legislature created the Select Committee on the Future of Public Higher Education in Vermont last summer. Uh, the committee was charged with providing, um, the, with developing an integrated vision and a plan for a high quality, affordable and workforce connected future for higher education in Vermont and to offer recommendations regarding the financial sustainability of the Vermont State College system. 
Um, and as in sort of as part of that, we received funding for this uh, fiscal year um, in recognition of the need to have the select committee do its work. Uh, the select committee issued its final report on Friday. It received unanimous support from the committee members, which did include a Castleton alum and a local business person, Jeff Weld. Uh, a copy of the final report has been submitted to this committee. Uh, two of the select committee's central recommendations have remained unchanged since the committee first issued an initial report back in December. And namely, that was aggressive administrative consolidation system-wide and restructuring the Vermont State College system by unifying Castleton University, Northern Vermont University and Vermont Technical College under a single leadership and a single accreditation. Our board of trustees adopted those central recommendations at its February 22nd um, meeting and a copy of the transformation proposal that was submitted to the board and approved by the board has also been submitted to the committee. Consistent with the recommendations of the select committee, the board is seeking to create a single unified institution that is student focused, that it assures statewide access to academic programs, it strengthens academic program offerings and continues to provide the high touch personalized student support that we're known for. We do recognize the importance of being transparent about the finances of the Vermont State College system and the value of being held accountable to the legislature, given the significant amount of state investment that will be needed for the Vermont State College system to continue to meet the needs of the state and its students. The House in its budget bill H439 did include a number of actions and reports um, on metrics that the Vermont State College system is to provide to the legislature, including this committee, moving forward. The actions and metrics that are included in the House budget bill correlate to the recommendations in the select committee's report and include that the chancellor shall establish policies and procedures to implement the board approved transformation plan as developed by the select committee on higher education. So the proposed bill uh, would derail the Vermont State College system's transformation. And I'm talking about the, the Senate Bill 134 uh, by increasing the personnel and administrative costs and also restricting the system's ability to create a truly unified, innovative, flexible, and fiscally sustainable public higher education system by essentially requiring it to maintain the existing status quo, which as we know is unsustainable. The state has already invested significantly in the Vermont State College system with the expectation that the system will transform itself consistent with the recommendations of the select committee and in our view, the bill would make it virtually impossible for the system to successfully implement the select committee's recommendations and reduce its structural deficit by $25 million over the next five years. So I just want to turn to the, the specific provisions that are in this bill. So the proposed bill requires that the Vermont State College system provide separate audited financial statements for each university and college within the system with information on their financial sustainability and enrollment. So first of all, the Vermont State College system is one single corporate entity, and it has been since its creation uh, back in the 60s. Its annual audited statements are publicly available on the website. We have a single set of annual audited statements. So this provision would actually impose additional requirements on top of what we are already doing. So it goes beyond maintaining the current status quo to actually impose additional requirements on us. Those requirements would significantly increase the costs of our external auditors and would require us to hire several additional staff members to manage the internal accounting that it would require. So this is asking us to do something we haven't done um, in the past and it would require us to create new systems to make this possible. The Vermont State College system's finances are highly transparent, particularly given what's occurred in the past 12 months. So it's a, you know, again, our, our finances have been examined, scrutinized and studied very closely um, over the past 12 months by the state treasurer, um, an external consultant hired by the Joint Fiscal Office, Jim Page, last summer, and then the external consultant, NCHEMS, um, who was hired and worked with the select committee. All three reports are publicly available. In addition, there is detailed financial information publicly available on the Vermont State College System website, 
And those th that information is available um, in the meeting materials for the board's finance and facilities committee, as well as materials for the full board. The system's finances, including enrollment data, are shared in public open meetings. And detailed enrollment data is also readily available in the Vermont State College System source books, which are compiled annually and made available on the Vermont State College System website. Moreover, the metrics contained in the House's budget bill include providing detailed information on enrollment levels to the General Assembly, as well as its annual profit and loss statement. I'm going to ask um, Sharon Scott, our, our Chief Financial and Operating Officer, to, 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 to chime in here as well, because one of the major changes we've already implemented um, in the past year is moving to a system-wide budget. And Sharon can explain a little bit more about how that operates and why that's valuable. And in fact, there's a lot more financial information being shared system-wide about what the costs are um, and how everyone is managing their budget. So Sharon, if you don't mind. So today, um, uh, in fact, as of last summer, the Vermont State College's Board of Trustees uh, elected to create a system annual al uh, operating budget. Um, it has always had a system-wide budget, but it has been composed and comprised of each of the individual institutions' budgets. But those budgets are only the unrestricted portion of the institution's funds. Um, they don't look at the other elements of an institution's operating budget. By moving to a system-wide annual operating budget, the board is better able to direct its attention and its resources where it is most needed within the system augmenting where it needs to, the work that is going on. Um, and uh, so our ability to be able to do that is to make sure that the institutions are fiscally sustainable and that the board is able to move forward effectively to allocate its resources to meet the goals and objectives of the system itself. I think it's also important to note that, I mean, again, referencing the reports that uh, that I just mentioned, but um, Jim Page's report, uh, the Treasurer's report, the NCHAM's report, um, none of these institutions within the Vermont State College system are capable of surviving on their own. Um, and so to the extent there's concern about, um, and, I, and I know we have heard this, but somehow Castleton is the uh, star of the system and somehow Castleton is going to be disadvantaged um, by being combined with the other two entities. Um, this is all about the survival of Castleton um, as well as the other entities. Um, so this is, this is not, um, you know, it's not about winners and losers in the system. The winners, if we can pull this off, this transformation is going to be the state and the students within the state. Because the goal is for us to maintain where we're located right now to provide statewide access for students and to also meet the workforce needs of the state by making sure the programming we provide is relevant and it's high quality. So I, again, I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any additional questions um, that, that you might have. Um, the, the, there was a piece on the annual included in this, um, I, I can happy to talk about it, but in terms of the annual budget allocation uh, that's also included in the bill, um, and again, the board right now uh, determines the base appropriation that's allocated to each of our institutions. That's public information. Uh, we've had board policy that, that lays that out. Uh, we previously described the history of how those state funds have been allocated um, and the fact that it's the allocation model is currently suspended, was suspended by the board last summer, but we provided that information in written testimony to the committee uh, back on March 18th of 2021. Uh, the Board of Trustees will be revamping the allocation formula consistent with the recommendations of the Select Committee. And that's in uh, pages 89 to 90 of the final report of the Select Committee. Resource allocation is one of the most important tools that the Board has to make sure that its strategic priorities are being served. Additionally, once we unify Castleton, Northern Vermont University and Vermont Technical College under a common accreditation, the allocation will change significantly because at that point there will only be two institutions to allocate the funding to rather than the current four. Um, the other, uh, on a more practical note, uh, the other note I would make with regard to the, the pro proposed bill is that it states that no less than 10 days prior to the payment of any allocation or part of any allocation to any of the colleges or universities, 
um, we would be providing information about uh, how that allocation is going to, to be made with the rationale. Um, as a practical matter, we receive the appropriation on a monthly basis. So as written, it would require monthly disclosures, which again would add to the administrative burden and cost of operating the system and make it more challenging to meet our transformation goals. Um, finally, the, the branding piece, um, this probably is the piece that, that um, is of greatest concern. Um, the proposed bill um, seeks to condition state funding on the Vermont State College system, not changing the name of any college or university within the system to a name that does not include the current name of the college or university at the beginning of its name. Um, this seems clearly intended to protect each institution's existing brand in the belief that a name change would negatively impact enrollment, donations, and business support. So it is true that a merger or unification can impact enrollment in the short term, but the Vermont State College system does need to transform in a meaningful and substantial way to become sustainable in the long term. Given the demographic challenges, the number of high school seniors in Vermont and New England is decreasing each year with a significant decrease, decrease anticipated in 2026 as a result of the 2008 recession. Accordingly, the Select Committee has recommended that the Vermont State College system transform to meet the needs of all students. So we're thinking about not only the traditional 18 to 24 year old students, but also early college high school students and also adult learners, which is a population that historically has been underserved in the state of Vermont. Therefore, we're seeking to better serve students where they are with a learning modality that works for them on a schedule that works for them with the courses, programs, and credentials that provide them with the knowledge and skills they need to attain their life and career goals and at a price they can afford. We're looking to build on our workforce development and continuing education programming, creating stackable credentials and non-credit certificates that enable people to upskill and reskill. The transformation plan includes the creation of a single point of contact for employers seeking further education for their employees and to provide input on programming for short-term certificate programs with clear labor market returns, developing non-credit programming to meet immediate employer needs, and seeding and nurturing entrepreneurship through the curricular and development of specialized programs. So we will be seeking to connect students to meaningful, relevant, and preferably paid internships and work experiences to better prepare them for the workforce and to assist them in covering the cost of obtaining their education. We're also exploring ways to attract businesses and potential employers to locate on some of our campuses to help build working and learning communities and provide paid internship opportunities on campus. So again, we're looking to build relationships with businesses. So again, I hear the concern from the Rutland community about uh, businesses, but again, we, we do plan to work with local businesses, with employers, and to reach out and build even stronger connections to those that we already have. Um, as far as the donor community goes, when Johnson and Linden were unified, some alumni and donors were initially unhappy about the unification, but through targeted outreach and communications, donations actually increased following unification. And NVU did recently receive a multi-million dollar gift, which was the largest in Vermont State College's history. Our development and alumni relations staff at the institutions are already starting to collaborate on messaging to donors and how they can strengthen their outreach by working together. We do recognize the strong attachment to institutional identities and brands that each of our institutions has, and we will be seeking ways to honor and preserve the traditions and customs that are unique to each of the affected institutions. However, it is vital to the success of the newly combined entity that we be able to create a new unifying brand and to market its strengths. We are creating a new university with an academic program array delivered across multiple campuses with a single set of policies, business processes, and administrative functions. We plan to create a singularly memorable brand that emphasizes the student-focused mission of the new entity and builds on the Vermont brand to attract students from out of state. So no decisions have yet been made on the name of the, name of the new entity or the brand of the new combined entity. And those decisions will be grounded in market research and shaped by data. 
our marketing teams from across the three institutions are currently collaborating on a request for proposals for that kind of market research. So while we will seek to market the new combined entity, this does not mean that we will not be able to market our individual campuses and programs to target audiences. Similarly, the name Castleton will continue to be associated with the Castleton campus, regardless of what the new entity is called, the same way that the names Johnson and Linden continue to be associated with the two Northern Vermont University campuses. By combining the marketing budgets and the admissions offices of the three institutions, we will be able to reach and hopefully attract more students from within Vermont, from out of state and internationally. We've also requested 5.25 million in transformation costs specifically for marketing and branding from the legislature. Some of this money will be used to ensure that all existing institution names are easily found and accessible via search engines and college search sites so that current and prospective students will easily and readily find their way to the new university. So again, uh, in very brief summary, but for us, the bill represents um, a real shift away from the path that we're on. And we do really have concerns that it, it could make the transformation um, unsustainable. It would require us to keep the status quo and the status quo just is not sustainable for the system moving forward. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, committee, questions? I'll, I'll guess I'll start, um, if you don't mind. I, uh, you know, I'm curious about the name piece. It, it seems, you know, I think uh, this is the kind of committee and the Senate likes to be responsive to uh, our colleagues and uh, certainly all of our constituents. And so I'm wondering if we could get to some kind of compromise or something on this. What, what would be the problem um, with keeping, you know, given that our colleague, a couple of our colleagues are from Castleton area, keeping at Castleton University, what's, what's the downside? So the, well, one would be money um, and two would be confusion. Three would be um, accreditation. Um, so when with a single accreditation, there will, there will be a single name for this new created entity. So we don't yet have the name for it, but it will have, we're calling it NCE, <laughs> new combined entity for now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it will have one name, right? And it will be accredited under that one name. Um, so if you call it Castleton, and then I'm just gonna make this, you know, Castleton University at new combined entity. I mean, one, yeah. that's quite the mouthful. Sure. Um, and two, I think it's going to cause confusion. I mean, it would be from a marketing perspective, we need to be able to market you know, come to this, the new combined entity, you know, we have the student focus, we, we really want to be able to, to market and brand what we're going to be doing. We're really looking at creating a very different um, higher education system here. We're, we're really trying to envision it for the future. And so, you know, if, we, if we're sort of limited because of the names, I think that's going to cause a problem. I mean, it's, it's going to affect our ability to market and capture the students that we're looking for. And again, there is nothing to preclude us if, if it's, again, new combined entity, just for the sake of argument at this sure. point, um, to have the Castleton campus at new combined entity. You know, you can come, you can play football, you can, you know, do all these things. This is, you know, you can ski, you know, it's great. You know, all this stuff is happening. Um, we can certainly market that to those students that are interested in a more traditional, um, you know, 18 to 24 year olds looking for a residential experience and looking for programs that are based at that campus. But again, the programs are going to be available statewide is the, is the goal. Um, so we can, we can market that way. But I think if we have, if we're forced to use Castleton University at new combined entity, it, I, I, I mean, I just think it's going to be a real struggle it, it, to, to be able to do that what, effectively. What, what about just Castleton at new combined entity? I mean, the accreditation piece, you know, I looked into this a little bit this morning. I, I ended up calling uh, uh, Larry, uh, I think it's Shaw at the New England Commission of Higher Ed. And, you know, I just wanted to talk through with him, you know, the, the accreditation piece and said, you know, Brian, there are nine standards to accreditation. Uh, you know, name is not one of them. So I, I don't see much concern around getting things accredited as it relates to, to the name. Uh, now, again, this was a, you know, 15 minute conversation at breakfast, perhaps, you know, he misunderstood me or I misunderstood him, but it sounds like the nine standards to accreditation, all this, that could sort of be 
somehow worked around um, with the commission. So, you know, I just, I, I'm thinking to myself, historically, this is, uh, you know, a wonderful campus, wonderful community, people know the name Castleton. Could it, it, could we get to a compromise? And I know we're not gonna get to it right here, but to, you know, again, to Castleton at, you know, new entity university or, or something like that. So that's just, that's just from where I'm at, but, uh, you know, wanting to be responsive to my colleagues and, and their constituents. Uh, Senator Chittenden. Senator Campion, I had very similar comments. So I see the arguments that you laid out very well, Chancellor Zadatny, on the financial piece and the auditing and uh, everything that you put, in, uh, put on the table. Uh, I could uh, definitely understand why I wouldn't want to split and, and create additional financial reporting. But when it comes to Castleton University, I was more sympathetic uh, to uh, allowing for that the retention of that name. Can I just ask a clarifying uh, question to the last thing I heard you say, Chancellor Zadatny? Will, will it not be possible to accredit the, it as one institution if we allow for the name to be Castleton University? I have dogs. Castleton University um, at name to be determined. Is that not a possibility? Is that a, a showstopper for the accrediting body as far as you understand? I don't believe it's a showstopper for, for NETCHI, um, but I believe it will be an in incredible challenge for us in terms of moving forward with the transformation. I think it will make it even harder than it is right now. I, I think it will be very difficult to market something where we've got six different place names with six different campuses before the name. Um, it, we're very, very small. You know, We're not on the same scale as the SUNY system or, or somewhere else. I don't think there's a problem with being the new combined entity at Castleton. Um, but I think if we're leading with that, it's it's gonna be a dilution of the message. It's really going to impact our ability to reinvent ourselves and to resell ourselves to, to our students moving forward. Um, as far as um, NETCHI goes, um, the understanding I have is that, um, you know, it's there would be one entity that has a name that is accredited. Um, if we have students, for example, that start at Castleton University, and then in two years time, they're graduating from the new combined entity, they can request to have a diploma with Castleton University on it. Um, and that's, I know that's an important thing for, for many students. Um, but, you know, the danger here is that we're going to land up just with in tremendous confusion. And we just think it's really important that we have the flexibility to come up with a marketing and branding strategy that really fits with the mission and vision of the new entity and not be constrained, um, you know, by having to predetermine the names on this. We live in confusion down here, Chancellor. I mean, we have the Bennington Battle Monument that the battle happened in New York State. Uh, so uh, we, we've worked around it, but but I, I, I understand your points. Uh, Senator Hooker and then Senator Lyons, please. I was just going to ask the same questions that have already been asked about, is this contingent upon accreditation? I mean, it's con accreditation contingent upon having one name. And it seems to me that there must be a creative way to get around this. Uh, I certainly understand um, that there, there may be some complications and maybe some confusion at first, but it seems to me that there might be a way to come up with some creative way to acknowledge these individual campuses up front. So well, I think we can certainly, we certainly will want to do that. I mean, there's, there's certainly things that we want to preserve at, you know, at all of our campuses and they're going to have different personalities just like they do now. Um, but I do think it could cause confusion to students because again, if you've, if you've got Castleton University at, at new combined entity um, from, but from the Department of Education's perspective, it, perspective, it's new combined entity in search engines, it's new combined entity. I, again, we will do what we can to make sure that, that students find their way that, that are familiar with Castleton and they're looking for Castleton, that they will certainly find their way um, to Castleton as part of the, the new combined entity. Um, you know, but it's, and we will do what we can to, to honor and market and preserve the, you know, the things that are unique and special about each of these institutions. Um, but it, it just is a concern. It just seems unwieldy to have, again, to have a, a one entity that is, you know, Johnson at new combined entity, Linden at new combined entity, Castleton at new combined entity. And I, I don't know with the Vermont Technical College, 
they might want to go with, um, you know, technical college at New Combined Entity rather than starting with whatever the new name is and then having that be at the, you know, at the end rather than at the beginning. Center lines. So I think the issue is, um, I think it's an important issue moving forward, uh, having a change come uh, that feels like it's top down is somewhat uh, um, confusing and also problematic. And, I, and you, are, you represent the top, uh, there's no question about it. But then the, the question I would have, I have two questions and I have comments, but so as you're looking at all of this, what uh, it would be helpful to hear the process that you're going to go through now that you've heard the significant concerns. And I think they are significant. I don't think they're limited to the three senators uh, from, from Rutland. I think that the, it goes beyond that. I think there are a number of people who are, want to know that the identity of these campuses is um, maintained because they have become so prominent in our state. So that's, that's one. Um, then, of course, I went to Rutgers, okay? And Rutgers has campuses all over the place. Uh, but we always had to defend ourselves that we went to the real Rutgers, you know, <laughs> not, not the satellite Rutgers. And um, uh, so I think we don't want to put ourselves in that position. We, but I think we would want to know that perhaps we have um, Castleton at uh, Vermont, Castleton, Vermont State, uh, Vermont University or Northern Vermont uh, University period. That's the Northern Vermont campus. It seems to me, I'm hearing you talk about advertising and marketing and brochures and uh, internet linkages that might be confusing but I don't, I, I can't see the confusion if the, if the, um, if there are commonalities to all the campuses, they can, there, there are, there are commonalities and there may be some really distinct flavors to campuses that can be highlighted, but you know, this is available at Castleton, this is available at Northern Vermont, this is available at CCV, I don't know. So I'm not, I'm not feeling the same sense of confusion perhaps, um, but, but my, my question is, what's the process that you may be going through to ensure that there's some public input to this really, I think really important issue for the citizens out in the state? Yeah, so again, I, I, as I mentioned, we do have, uh, we will be putting out a request for proposals to do some market research to really sort of find out what people think of, uh, think of when they think of our different institutions. Um, I think it's important to remember, you know, this new combined entity will be 5,000 students. It's still going to be very small. Um, it is um, significant costs at the marketing and branding. If, we've, if we're trying to maintain multiple separate different brands, um, I think it will be costly and expensive for us to do that. And I think it also sends the wrong message in terms of what we're creating. We're creating a new university that's going to have this very student focused uh, approach um, that we want to be available to students of all kinds across the state. Um, you know, we're not reaching out solely to um, 18 to 24 year olds. We really need to remarket ourselves to those um, adult learners and people that haven't found their way um, to, to higher education before or need to complete. So we really would like to be able to use the dollars we have as wisely as we can um, to really tell a good story about who we are and what we can do and our role um, here in Vermont, the wide spectrum of experiences and programming that we'll have. So we will have the sort of traditional residential experiences, we'll have low residential experiences, we'll have um, you know, very flexible programming for um, you know, students that are, uh, you know, I, I just was hearing one anecdote the other day, but of a, uh, a stonemason in Peacham who's been able to, to take courses and complete a first year of a degree at VTC because of COVID and because everything's been online. How do we preserve that and enable that person to complete a degree? Um, so we have a lot um, to do ahead of us. We have an exciting story to tell. And my concern is that this will really restrict our ability 
um, to do that. And again, there's no intention here to, um, to ignore or not appreciate uh, the, the history, the traditions, the name, the, the, the past, um, but really to, we want to be able to create something new and move us in the right direction and send the message that it's not the status quo. We are transforming, we are doing things differently. It's not the same old, same old where everyone can just, oh, well, no, we're, we're at Linden, we do things this way here, or we're at Castleton, we do things this way here. Um, so it, it is, I think, really important for us moving forward to, to have the flexibility to, to rethink what we're going to look like in the future and what the name will be. Senator Hooker. I guess I'm, I'm kind of stuck on the idea that um, the corporation, the new, the new combined entity, will certainly move in a direction that I think education needs to be moving in. And I appreciate all of the um, future uh, differences that it, it will make, you know, the, the stackable credentials, the, the connection to business, uh, and, and being certainly being student-centered. But when you talk about a new entity, it strikes me that the new combined entity isn't an entity, and that Castleton University is, and new, you know, Northern University is, and VTC is. They they are entities. They are things that you can see. Um, new combined entity. You're you're saying that we're going to create this new university system, this new university, but it isn't the university. It's what sort of governs the university. Yes, okay, but how do we? Um, differentiate between those things that are, I guess, tangible and the things that are not? And is there a way so that we can maintain that connection between the things that are tangible and the, the process or structure that is necessary in order to maintain them? Right. I mean, so we do have some experience, obviously, with um, Northern Vermont University, because that was certainly two separate physical campuses before that came together to be Northern Vermont University. So while the new combined entity is not a reality yet, it will be once we get to that point in two years time. Um, so I don't know if uh, Sharon or Catherine, if you had other so, points you uh, wanted to I, I would love to hop in for just a second. I was um, working for Johnson State College when Johnson State and Linden State were identified by our board of trustees as requiring to merge, a top-down activity, um, which is similar to what's being proposed today, though um, the work has had substantially greater vetting and conversation regarding the creation of the combined entity from Castleton, Northern Vermont University, and Vermont Tech than what we even saw when we created Northern Vermont University. Senator Hooker, you referred to Northern Vermont University as an entity, which it is today. But in 2016, when we began that conversation, it was not an entity. It was two separate institutions with two very divergent cultures, two different presidents, two different organizational structures, all operating within a single corporation. Um, we brought those groups together. We brought the two institutions together. And through a lot of shared conversation and shared governance, we created a single general education program. We identified where the strengths are for each individual location. And we market those strengths. But what we market more so than that for Northern Vermont University is the strength of the overall institution that you refer to. We are stronger as a system, and I would argue that Vermont Tech, Northern Vermont University, and Castleton will be stronger together as a combined institution in three years' time than they can be independently on their own today, and certainly when what they would look like in the future. They are on shaky ground right now, and their ability to be able to come together and create a vision for what that institution will be to move towards working with adult learners, stackable credentials, workforce education, and simultaneously continuing to serve 18 to 24 year old populations is where they need to head. But it's something that they need to do together in order to be able to do that in a fiscally responsible, fiscally sustainable way, to be able to continue to meet the needs of Vermonters across the entire state of Vermont. And, and I'm not arguing that that's not the case. 
I'm just saying there must be a way to hold up these these traditional names if you know certainly if the institution sees that as really necessary um, and apparently down in this area of the state people see that as necessary there must be a way to um, market the whole entity this whole uh, new system that's coming into being and yet be able to um, hold on to that part of tradition that is important to at least in this area and, and I, I do believe that it's important to the other areas as well I mean I, I would absolutely agree with you Northern yeah, Vermont and, 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 both and, campuses and, were, uh, felt that way yeah no I appreciate that I, I just want to move us along uh, Center Lyons final question well I guess it's a question but um, so what I've heard uh, the Chancellor say is that the the bill that we're looking at is contrary to what the board has indicated and contrary to the select committee recommendations. Is that accurate? That is you, accurate. You just shake, shake your head. Yes, but, that so, is you know, so, um, and so then, then the question comes up, what is the timing on getting to some uh, decision about the the marketing piece and that includes the naming piece and how that will be done i guess because i'll just ask this stupid question again what's the timing on this because i probably didn't hear it i also got knocked off the internet for a little while so i may have missed it um yeah so we're, we're working on that right now um again we've got um our marketing teams are doing market uh getting ready to do a request for proposal uh, to do some market research so that any decision we make will be data driven. Uh, we will take input um, on that. We don't have a formal process yet uh, with the board, but the board is meeting, if not monthly, at least every six weeks and we'll continue to do that through the summer. Um, so again, we're, we're gathering information at this point. Um, so we don't need to have the name right now, but we recognize the sooner we have it, the better it will be. It will help our marketing and admissions folks um, as they're recruiting because they're already recruiting students, you know, for fall of, of 22 and, and fall of 23. I mean, they're building those connections with students right now. So it will be helpful for them to know what it is that they're, they're selling to, to prospective students. So. Um, we will be, you know, we are working on a name. We will have a name, I would anticipate, by the end of the summer or beginning of the fall. Um, okay, and if we pass this bill into law, that really precludes any of the decision making that, or the work that's going on, I guess. It doesn't allow for the data driven marketing right. analysis. Okay. So I'm starting to feel a little ambivalent about all of this a whole lot uh, in terms of sort of uh, putting a barrier up to the work that's going on. I, it, it, just because so much work has already go, gone on around all this. With all due respect to my Rut, Rutland colleagues, um, right. you know, I, it's hard. There's, gee, gee, and there's just no question about it. This is so difficult because, and it is about the, the people who live in the area. It's also about all of us who identify Castleton University at Castleton. Yeah. Um, so, but. Well, we want it to be successful. And I, yeah. I just, I mean, it's really vitally important to us that this be, this transformation be successful. And we just want to make sure we have all the tools that we need to have it be as successful as it can be. And again, there's nothing to preclude us from marketing, you know, why coming to Castleton and that Castleton is a great place to come to and the campuses at Castleton, I'm sure it will continue to be known as Castleton. We just don't want to be hamstrung in our ability um, to really design and envision something new um, that will really serve the state and the students. Thank you, Chancellor Zanotny. Uh, I, I would, if, if I could just make a recommendation, I have uh, in the Senate, as I said to Ms. Lavasser yesterday, seen this movie before where a senator does have a particular local issue that uh, isn't particularly political, is something that's very important to those constituents. There is a real outpouring of, of need and direction. And I've seen the Senate 
um, move to, you know, make these kinds of changes as recommended in the bill. So, I mean, I don't think it's our interest necessarily to do it legislatively, but I, reading the room, a little bit of my Senate colleagues and my history in the Senate, I, I would recommend if you would please uh, continue having conversations with the Rutland delegation, uh, continue seeing if there might be a path forward where this could work uh, or we could get to some kind of compromise. Uh, that would be my hope. And um, I would certainly appreciate any efforts that you and your team might put in toward to getting to that, to that point. So uh, yeah, we've that, certainly had a lot of conversations with folks from the Rutland area. I'd be more than happy to right. communicate with, um, with, with folks in the business community and, and whoever about what we're dealing with and what we're, Confronting again, the goal here is the survival of Castleton. We the last thing any of us want is to lose um, Castleton. That would definitely be damaging Absolutely. to Rutland and, and to the and state. So we want to make higher ed hat on for a minute after 16 years. I, I think uh, my experience would be uh, there are things to make an institution successful, and I'm not sure if the battle uh, to uh, change the name from where I'm sitting. Is, is the one that I would personally want to be having. But again, um, I would don't want to make these changes legislatively. I'm not saying we would make these changes leg legislatively, but I, I am hoping that you will all continue to work hard toward a some kind of compromise. Uh, one acceptable compromise for me would be uh, to call it Hooker University. Um, and if uh, we could all agree on that at this point, then I think the conversation is over. But for now, let's put this on pause and, uh, and, and return to it. In the meantime, I am hopeful that you will all just continue those conversations um, as we will with our Senate colleagues. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, colleagues, uh, committee, we have on the agenda uh, governor's appointments. We've heard from the Secretary of Education. We have he has uh, shared his uh, CV with us. Um, we've gotten to know him uh, through his hearing, but also through his time with us in committee. So uh, I am wondering if someone might want to make a motion to uh, confirm the Secretary of Education, Danny move. French. Gladly, I'll move that. Uh, thank you. Senator Chittenden uh, has made the motion. Any uh, committee questions or discussion? Seeing none, uh, I think Senator Perslick, is your preference uh, a roll call or just, uh, or not, How would you? I was told by Jeannie that the process is the same for these as they are a bill. So I think okay. that means a roll. All right, a, roll call. a roll call sounds great. Okay. Perchlick votes yes. Senator Hooker. Yes. An unmuted yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Chittenden. I'm a creature of habit, so I vote aye. <laughs> I'd be concerned if you did. Uh, Senator Campion. Uh, yes. And I'd like to keep the vote open for Senator Terenzini so he has an opportunity. Uh, so if we, if it's okay with everyone, we'll try to uh, reach Senator Terenzini. He may even be watching us now from uh, his recovery room. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get to him sometime today. If Jeannie, if you'd be so kind as to reach out to, to Senator Terenzini, that would be great. And let him know uh, that we would like his vote um, one way or the other for the Secretary of Education. Okay. Senator Persley. How do you want to do that? Do you want to wait till we're back in committee or if he just emails me or calls me or how do you want to have I that? Think we're, I, I'm comfortable if he were to just uh, put it in an email. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, why don't we just take a quick five minute stretch and we'll return to uh, the State Board of Education. Okay. Yeah. Point on that. Do we need yeah. a reporter? Uh, I would like to report if, in, unless someone is uncomfortable with that, just, uh, I'd like to, uh, share. 
that so, you should report it. Okay. Secretary is reported by the okay. chair. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in five minutes.